Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Here we go. Are we on? All right. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Non PC Housing. Woo-hoo! Cheers, ladies. Well, thank you, ladies. Episode three. Yes, episode, episode three. three. So we're gonna do a little introduction, so we kind of get an idea. Um, our topic was changes are needed, and so what? But what changes are needed? On today's episode, we're going to talk about and dig into several areas. Um, to show fractures, schisms, downright failures, to get people in our community and everywhere the funds and tools they need to make real positive changes. Uh, And meaningful housing, by the way. We're not going to solve all this today, of course. It'll probably take us several episodes to do so, and we're kind of already anticipating the next episode in um, August will also be about this as we dig further, right? Um, And we want to have episodes that open the door to conversations, with everyone involved from the top down. Uncomfortable conversations, which is why we're not PC housing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll get there. Uh, by there, I mean real solutions and real suggestions for real solutions. We can't pick up the ball and run with it by ourselves, but we can offer the ball and support to those who can, who have the wherewithal, who have the knowledge base, the skill sets, um, the ears of government and the public to carry the ball of change to those who will listen and act to improve this, our human condition here. And so we're going to start off with Rebecca. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that we've been talking about is how difficult it is for the local people to actually maintain their housing in the town. And um, what's happening in our town and I think across the nation is uh, people are moving in and buying up a lot of the multifamilies and kicking the residents out. And uh, I know three buildings right now where people have come in, purchased these buildings, and the tenants have to leave uh, and find new housing somewhere. And I quite often ask them, like, well, dude, why didn't you just buy the house? You know, why? I have, I have three buildings. Why don't you just buy the house? Well, one, the houses sell within seven days. They're, they're off the market within seven days. Mm-hmm. So they're getting listed, and they're, the, we have people from out of state coming in, coming in and just buying them up really quick. Uh, And typically what they want, they're asking the seller to evict all the tenants so they can come in and live in the house and renovate it. Um, And a lot of these people are below middle income. Middle income right now, like we discussed, is 51 to $155,000. So that's two couples that need to make anywhere from 50,000 to 150,000 to be able to afford to buy a house potentially. Most of the people that are living in Rockingham right now, in Bells Falls specifically, that are used to renting for $650 a month yep. and you know get some heat assistance or maybe heat is included, um, can't shell out uh, you know, what, it, what is needed for a down payment. So what's happening is these people are blindsided. They have no idea that this is happening. They're living in their apartment. They're minding their own business. All of a sudden, everything's being sold. They're not tuned into housing like we are. Mm -hmm. They're not tuned into the fact that there's no place to rent. So I literally had five people contact me as a landlord in the last four weeks saying, I need a three bedroom. I need a two bedroom. I have to be out in a month. I have to be out by September 1st. And I say to them, why didn't you buy the house? Well, I don't have the money. I don't have the funds to buy a house. And it would cost somebody that is making, that's probably making between two people, 50 grand. So you've got a woman that might be working in the human service agency type thing that Sevka 
or HCRS that's maybe making 30 grand right. or husband's probably working at what is that a current Hatton or something mm -hmm. like that they, they might be making 50 grand between the two of us two of them maybe 60 now they have two kids you know one family has two kids and a mother-in-law living in there so the expenses are really high to to have to be able to buy a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home in Bellas Falls right now, which is ludicrous, because yeah. our houses were going for seventy five to one fifty, they're now at one seventy five to yeah. two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Right. So that's the reality. Well, they're, is they're, 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 up, they're up a hundred percent. The houses right. in Bellas Falls, yeah. believe it or not, are up a hundred percent. So it's a tailwind. The people have no idea what's happening. They would have to, for, for a family like that, they would have to come up with 20% down on 250. Yeah. So there's, there's so 50, 50 grand right, right there. there. And then the closing cost is 10. Banks don't roll the close on a brand new home. They don't, they don't roll the closing cost in. Right. So now they're looking at $60,000. Who has that? Who has $60,000 as a, especially as a renter, as a renter yeah. tucked and, aside, yeah. waiting to buy a home. Yep. And we have all these great programs that are tucked away and silent and private that we've not marketed to help people. Wyndham Windsor Housing yep. Trust has this whole, hey, we'll teach you how to be a landlord. You know, we'll give you money. We'll set you up. We'll pay the down payment. But that's what? A four or five month process? Right. In the meantime. And it's a long process. So for the, these people that are getting notified Hey, the, I'm putting the house on the market. Do you want to buy it? Uh, give me five you've, months to educate I mean, myself. Think, yeah. on, no, thanks. No, you've the got five days. The landlord's like, no, we're done. You've got five days. Highest, Thank you. Highest bidder takes it. Yeah, and you have 30 days, days to get out. And yeah. oh, by the way, if you don't have the money or the means or the funds or the expertise or mm -hmm. the education, you need yep. to move. Yeah. So we have a really good family. He's a local guy that's been in town. I'm not going to say his name. Right. Um, two kids. The wife, the mother-in-law, huh. uh, living on half good extension. He now he's he contacted me. He needs to find a place. Wow. He needs to find a place. He can't find anything in Bell's Falls, as people know. It's very difficult right now to find rentals in Bell's Falls, especially a three-bedroom or a two-bedroom. He's moving us out of town. He's heading to Springfield or Putney or Brattleboro, so we just lost like a really good person whose family has contributed yeah. to this, this community for a long time. Two people in the school system who are two, now right. leaving too. They're leaving yeah. too. Yeah. And, um, and they're not the only family. No, they're not. Because they're I know not. of another I, one. I, I, Great I had, family moved to Charleston. Yep. I had four people, four people that have uh, moved out. The other thing, just it, it kind of off topic, um, 21 Henry Street. Yeah. 12 units all of those people have either gone to Rutland or Springfield. Yeah. So they're out okay. of the community All out now. of the community. They included the, there's, there's a fam, at least a fa one family in yep. there with kids. Yeah. There's three, I think, that are still in there that are getting evicted and they can't find, they can't find a place. Yeah. And um, we have one woman there that, um, Abenaki descent. Oh, yeah. Yep. And um, she can't find a place in Bells Falls. So she might have to, her only other option is a hotel in Brattleboro. But that's mm. off topic. So the topic here is how do people in our community that want to buy houses, yeah. especially like a multifamily house yeah. that would help offset the mortgage, afford it? Yeah. You can't. On, and I, on the I wages. Want to be clear on your topic, that we're talking about middle income is actually the working poor. The, yeah. These are people who are working, both of them, I mean, two jobs, you know, maybe more, because, yeah. you know, sometimes you double up based yeah. upon what you can do. Yeah. Day and night, you see each other at the toothbrush yeah. stand. That's about it. And they're the working poor because they don't get any assistance. Mm -hmm. There aren't any programs for them. Mm -hmm. And they can't get into a home because they just can't save enough money yep. to do that. Yep. If you don't have relatives that are going to give you a gift right. of cash, say right. $20,000 or more, or more, mm -hmm. we talked, you just said 50 grand, they are never going to get into a home. No. And I asked my real estate agent, I said, you know, why... Why didn't this tenant buy this house? Now he has to get evicted and vacate and find a place. And she's like, he just doesn't have the funds. It's too expensive. It's yeah. the down payment is too expensive. And the house didn't qualify for FHA. 
which okay. it needs to be in oh, yes. pristine it has to be, condition. It has to be a turnkey ready. Turnkey yep. pristine, and yep. they're just not. Yep. But people from our state are thinking 250 for a dilapidated house in Bells Falls, even though it has some historic features, yeah. is worth it. Right. And they and usually they have cash or something like that. They yep. can just plop it down. Yep. We can't know. So, people here can't do that. So we're losing we're losing some of our local citizens because of this housing crunch. Yeah. And, and with this it. I want to just deal. mention because changes are needed and that was where our little spin the yep. wheel. Mm -hmm. We didn't bring the wheel today. Mm -hmm. No, not today because, because we know we, we we're going to think we're going to stick on this one next about month this. too. There'll be more information once we've yeah. done this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, um that's kind of the, a little bit on the housing crisis from my neck of the woods mm -hmm. of I've got four or five people calling me in a panic saying I need to be out in the month. And my attitude is like, why the hell didn't you buy the fucking place? Oops, excuse me, but you know, <laughs> We're not just PC. buy, so buy the friggin' house the guy. You know, yeah. be the landlord. And I yeah. said this to him, and he's like, oh, okay, it's like an afterthought. So, you know, our people that are local, they need to start buying some of these places. Yeah. And, they have and a supporting place themselves. To look. Yeah. And um, so how do we help them? How do we make sure that they know there's programs out there? Right. Well, and you, you yourself are part of a program right now. Right. Which isn't right. getting diddly for advertising, really. Yeah. Um, so you go tell so right now. So we have in, in, in Bells Falls... The taxpayers have set aside hundreds of thousands of dollars for businesses. And we have two funds. We have the revolving loan fund, which if you decided to buy a multifamily, they treat it like a business. You can set it up as an LLC. You can treat it like a business. And they will give you, you can go to the revolving loan fund in Bells Falls and basically ask for the down payment. And you can have that 50 grand or that 40 grand or whatever you need to purchase that multifamily. You know, I would suggest that you do it in advance and go ahead and start looking for multifamilies to buy and have mm -hmm. the, the cash set aside. But we also have programs for housing preservation that if you're already in a building that you can, um, you can use some of those funds to preserve that housing. Um, but you can treat your your domain, your domicile, where you're living as a business. And that qualifies for the revolving loan fund to get a loan to purchase, actually purchase the building. So you don't have to worry about coming up with 30 or 40 or $50,000 to put down. You can come to the revolving loan fund, treat it like a business and purchase that piece of property. But no one knows about this. No mm -hmm. one knows the steps to do that. So we're we, telling them. We also, right, so that's Gary Fox at the um, town office, the development director, Revolving Loan Fund, Bells Falls Revolving Loan Fund. You also have Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust that has a lot of programs for home buyers that can be a little daunting. It can take some time, but if you're, you know, if you're willing to put in the time and the energy and go through the process, there was a woman that they, her down payment was $80,000 for a single family home. She went through the program. Wow. They gave her $80,000 to buy this house. Wow. And what did she have to pay back? Nothing. Less than? No, no. It, it, it's, it's a, that, that was a grant. Here's oh, the Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust? Yes. Here's $80,000. Wow. wow. Single woman buying a single family home. She's not supporting any other people. It's right. not like she bought a multifamily. She bought a single family home mm -hmm. and Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust gave her $80,000 to buy that house. Okay. So no money out of pocket. Although I'd like to understand better how they would, a single person. A single, yeah. Single that. person. I, yeah. I, yeah. I would, we would have to delve into that. And I wow. can bring that maybe to the next meeting. Yeah, it'd be worth Because I, I know the person that sold the house. Yeah. I know the seller and I know uh, Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust. Okay. So, uh, yeah. but how does a single woman whose kids aren't living with her, right. get $80,000 to buy this property. Yeah. So yeah. what they do but is- now we have a homeowner they, in that what, property that wasn't- they, uh, Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. But yeah. you know, we're now we're, lo we're still losing people who are getting kicked out of their apartments. So I think what they do is they take the land value yeah. and they own the land. Okay. Mm. So they oh, own when the land. Oh, Wyndham Trust owns yeah. the land. That's right. I forgot. So, so here's she the sells land value. The, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's a special so, program. So you need yes. to really look at that. 
Yeah. Um, if you're cons considering using Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust. Right. Um, I'm going to get into that when I get into my part. Anyway. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> there are programs out there. There are programs out there for everyone um, to start looking at and planning the purchase of either single family home or multifamily. I live in a multifamily. I have multifamilies. I'm all about that. If you want to reach out to me, I will mm -hmm. help anybody that wants to purchase a, a multifamily home. I'll do whatever I can. I'll find whatever grant programs are out there. I'm even thinking about subsidizing people to yeah. help them along. And yeah. that's that's another future topic, you know, to get especially single people with children into a house that actually is a cash mm -hmm. flow, cash cow. So there you go. That's, okay. that's my spiel. That's your spiel. You want to sh show that, put that flyer up so that the camera might see Oh, it. yeah. So I don't know if you can see this, but it does pay. Maybe the camera it does, will It does in. pay to be a landlord in Rockingham. So there's so many grant programs out there right now through the Housing Trust and through the town of Rockingham where um, grant money, what people don't know is free money. It's free. It's free. Here's ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to renovate, to help purchase, um, whatever you need to do. So there's programs out there. Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust and the Rockingham Revolving Loan Fund. Um, check it out and give us a call. Great, nice, thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So my piece today is about the problems with the entire spectrum. I think that um, somebody out the outside there can put up the flyer. Um, it's a tools and funding paths. I wanted to kind of show show the trickle down process. There you go. You can see it on camera. Um, and this is just to show where where fed, where our monies are coming from and the tools that we're able to use. Remember, federal government has a lot of restrictions and availabilities. And they some of it gets down to the local level, and they allow us some opportunities to do um, housing and issues like that ourselves. But a lot of that and the funding itself goes down to the state legislature. It gets down to the possibility of what the Attorney General and Secretary of State have some input there. Legislature makes laws um, and the Senate representatives pass bills or they don't. And my, a lot of my concern is the tough stuff that really would give us more tools. And I'm talking about whether you're a tenant or a landowner um, are not necessarily passed. And they go on to another uh, session and then we hope the, for the best and we try to make um, people some of us will go up there and make testimony um, to see if we can make these things move and they don't necessarily but bills passed and the funding that goes with them goes down to things like the regional commissions which we have um, the Wyndham Commission Regional Commission mm -hmm. here in, in this part of Vermont there's local governments as in um, municipal municipalities Rockingham Bellows Falls Saxons River right here uh, re our representatives bring down that stuff too, along with the Senate, down to nonprofits, of which we have a plethora, and uh, I'm sorry, a choking amount of nonprofits. Hmm. The money and the restrictions on how the money can get spent and who is qualified goes down to them. Um, health administration is also d dictated by the feds and Vermont state, um, and as well as our zoning bylaws and the administration of those and our police and fire, who can be restrictive or non, depending based upon what these particular laws are. And that has to do with what you can build, what you can't build, where you can put something, where you can park, you know, just like, you know, you probably had plenty of these ideas, these things happen to you yourself. We get down to what's left to single family homes, owner occupied tenancy, which means homes such as Rebecca was just talking about with someone owns owns the building but lives in part of the house and the other house, the rest of the house is, uh, has additional tenants. And then offsite landlords, of which we have unfortunately too many, even just in our community. And now at the bottom you have tenants. And I see there's no strings attached to those because the rest of the money evaporates. The majority of assistance and help goes into the pockets of the mid-level, um, which is the regional commissions, the local government and nonprofit organizations who dictate how the money gets distributed to you. The person who needs it. Um, the reality is, I think there's too many strings. Let's. I have an idea about flipping it on its head because I said, do the tools and the funding get down here? Mm -hmm. Most of you probably say no. Do they work for us? Most of you probably say no. Is the delivery method effective? That's a definite no. Um, all the applications, even including, I'm sorry, but it, Wyndham Windsor Housing yeah. Trust, Sevca, 
Um, let's see, who else can I list? Um, there's just so many of them that we have in our own area. Housing authority. Housing, and... Yep, the, the, go back up to the Vermont Housing Authority and others with their requirements on how the money gets distributed. Instead of giving the money directly to us, the money goes to those who need it. I'm not saying I do, but I'm saying for those who need it in our community. It goes through these agencies, and it has to go through them in order to get to you, and most of it goes in their pocket. Nonprofit organizations make money, but it goes in their pocket. And then they, they, prove, they prove their reason for being, their raison d'etre, mm -hmm. by saying raison how many people they helped. But they don't tell you exactly what they did to help them and how they helped them. I mean, the number of people, they, they could use a ticker that says how many people came in the door, but not necessarily who got anything. Well, I have applied for many, many grants at Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust. Yeah. Because I know how to do it. Okay. I, yes, my grant have background, practice. I have practice, I know how to do it, and they've cut me off. They've said, you know what, you have enough right now, so even though you're applying, you need this work, and you're really good at it, we're not going to fund you. So How they, is that a good reason? They make a decision internally of who they're going to fund. They would rather keep the money in the okay. coffers yeah. than fund somebody that knows how to access the money. So when you talk about like the, the administration within these organizations, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, she's had enough. Let's not give her any any more money. So if I took a tenant yeah. or 10 tenants and said, this is, the this is how you do it, did they might would they be cut off? I don't know. Maybe but if they, they could maybe try if it. those organizations didn't know you were doing that. They didn't know I was doing it. But I can tell you um, through my own family experience, number one, I got my house without any help from any of these organizations. They didn't want to help me. I'm middle no. income. I had to come up with $22,000 to buy my house. I did. Mm -hmm. um, I had to. I had to scrabble. I had to go through uh, a possible losing my house because I couldn't come up with the money until I came up with the money. There was no one out there. I needed to get my electrical system in my house changed because it was all knob and tube. Maybe there was a maybe two percent was um, Romex, but I couldn't get any help from Sefka. They said I'm not helping you insulate as long as you've got thirty thousand dollars worth of electrical help. You need. We're not going to help you. So there was no help for me in that. And okay, we got by. Unfortunately, the house burned. And then we got all new Romex. Mm -hmm. um, my granddaughter Shay has a, um, has a mm -hmm. place of her own. She has a tenant, or is it two floors? Maybe it's one tenant. So she's doing the dream yeah. that, that you're talking about. Yep. Um, she did not get this kind of assistance. Mm -hmm. My son and his wife had to leave commu their, our community with their children and finally found a house that they could buy in Springfield without the help of SEPCA, without the help of Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust, and without any kind of help except for VHA. They got a yep. VHA loan, they qualified on their own um, without the classes, which by the way, they took a few years ago and were very depressed and just dropped out of the whole scene mm. um, until they got back up to it and they got the home on their own, but they mm. didn't want to leave our community and they had no choice. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, there's one other, I was trying to think, who else? There was one, there was one other situation just like this. So um, no, needing that help, becomes so onerous and so embarrassing and so upsetting and so deep. Dig up this record, dig up that record, dig up this record. It's just, it's it's difficult for people to get um, the things that they need and they're withholding that money, the money that the feds and the state of Vermont have allowed to be allocated to people who need it, mm -hmm. who qualify, but the reality is they determine, the, it's nonprofits, local government, and regional yep. commissions that determine who qualifies. And that money that. we talked about the, in here, this money mm -hmm. goes to big projects, big projects, and then a pittance, a pittance, a tiny little pittance, a yeah. tiny pittance finally singles down to us. To a few people. So we're talking big community development block grant projects right. so like when, for when housing. Right, trust is eating up yeah, bunch like that individual the, the unit, The units use. that are going in at the that you know down the road yeah. and stuff like that the big developments that's where a lot of that money goes mm -hmm. when if it's siphoned down into the towns yeah. to the tenants that could yeah. actually buy local i know buy, thinking, you know there are no buy your food there, local buy your house there are local. no classes that's an idea yeah. change that's an idea that you have which is teaching individual tenants people who are tenants how to buy how to be yeah. a landlord, how to handle their property, mm -hmm. how to take care of it in such a way as they're not right. killing themselves. Yeah. And that is 
that's a program that no nonprofit is giving, that's right. or, or no. nor regional commissions, nor local you know, government, you know why? nor zoning bylaws, nothing You like You will own nothing and be happy. They don't want, and I'm going off here, they don't want the local people supporting themselves. And they want the local people to have to rely on them, But that's the what government. he lives on. The tenant, I, uh, people who are tenants... A lot of them, a majority of them, are people who work here. They support our community. They, they are putting their right, money here. Right. They are. And they, they're supporting you who needs your cup of coffee. They're supporting right, you right. who needs your high end dinner or whatever it is. They're doing that because they're here. But you're kicking them out of the community. I'm, I'm talking right. about the upper yeah. income levels. Right. They're kicking them out of the community because there's nothing here for them. You're not. You're squeezing them out of our community. Mm -hmm. So instead of having an organization come in and say, you can stay in your community, buy a house, be a mm -hmm. landlord, be a homeowner, whatever you want to do, here are the resources. Oh, you're you're right. Nonprofit all set up right there. I do. Yeah, you're no, proving yourself. You all yeah. work and you love yeah. this community and yeah. we want you, you to want stay to yeah. and this is how we're going to help. And one of the That's... early conversations that you and I had was about starting a micro organization yes. that gave lo small loans mm -hmm. to people that needed to work their way up. So it could yep. also include classroom time and stuff like that yep. in order to get them there. And because you know the market mm -hmm. and you know all these people and a lot of the properties that are for sale and what right. needs to be done. The tax um, sales that are coming up. Exactly, tax sales that are coming up. All these things would be a plus to help motivate them and get them into their own place where right. they also, not only are they providing a foundation for their lot for their rest of their lives they're also providing housing for somebody else right so they they have an a, advantage it's a great idea and we really should it, move forward with that they have an advantage i, mean, I can yeah. give you my micro loans okay. to start your micro yes. business <laughs> <laughs> but people need to know i offered i have four buildings and i offered one of my tenants each of them my building and they all said i don't know how to be a landlord I'll teach you how to be a landlord. Yes, but, you know no, you, it's you human need, compassion. You need more structure, though. We need you need some a lot of structure. Class. Yeah, but there's also programs that you were talking about to develop your property. Mm -hmm. Turn your carriage barn or your garage into, into a housing, housing unit. And get I yeah. Mean, first of all, they're cute as hell. Get and, additional income. Do an Airbnb. Do a, an in-law apartment. Uh -huh. The accessory yeah. dwelling there's units. A, yeah. A, yeah. So I'll talk about that. So. Um, and I'm but. pretty much done with it, except for my last thing. Here's here's an idea for change. I would like to treat this whole money cycle so top down. I would like to have it bottom up. I think that we should do. We should pull a Biden. President Biden <laughs> took money that was printed and available as it is from the federal and state governments, and gave it to individuals who needed it with much fewer qualifications in, than is required by every nonprofit that I'm aware of. Um, I think that that would be a way to actually make the money work, work harder, and mm -hmm. get more benefit. Yep. Um, they don't trust it, and that's the problem. See, the problem is lack of trust. They don't trust the community to do the right thing with funds. But we have a revolving loan fund, and we have a, a uh, housing committee that is doling out money. So the, the town already has a structure set up to get that flow of money in mm -hmm. and then have the tenants come and apply for that if we want to go that route. And I would like to see what they're, I'm sure, um, oh, by the way, applications for things like the Revolving Loan Fund are on RockinghamVT.org. You can find them yourself. And I think by the next episode, I'm going to be pulling them yep. and looking at what's wrong with them. Because, yeah, we're going over that. Because there's definitely something wrong with them because not enough people know about it for one. So marketing is nil to almost impossible. So another reason why we're doing this. Um, if you have further questions, make sure to contact us at nonpchousing. Uh, excuse me, nonpchousing at gmail .com, and we'll answer questions if you don't get it with what we're talking about now. Um, I think I've covered my piece. Mm. I just want to mention something about the bottom up. Yeah. And this was something that I thought of before we started getting stimulus checks. The whole bailout of the millionaires, um, mm. those people don't spend money. We know that they don't spend money. That's why they're they still it. rich. Yeah. Yeah. You give money to us, guess what we do? We spend, spend it. it. And we spend it. And in that's our what we did over COVID. Um, yeah. Oh, that would be one local. more thing, which is unfortunately, I'm going to say it. When was a housing trust using a construction company that is not in Vermont? So here we are, just up the street. 
from that project, that giant multi-million dollar project, and we're using an out-of-state, New Hampshire, I believe, construction firm to do the job. Why are we not using Vermont workers, local Vermont workers, to get this job done? I cannot, I know that there are so many of them in our state, even in Wyndham County, and yet we're not using them to make sure the money stays in our community. It's leaving the state. That's a problem in almost every in construction type of industry. And, and that's I a problem believe... with nonprofits spending that money because they're spending it out of state. But I believe it has something to do with the, because they're answering to state and federal. Uh -huh. And yeah, it has to be a grant approved, they like a had federal a bid, state. They would have had a bid process. They would have. But in the bid process, you have criteria. And mm -hmm. part of your criteria can be, must be a Vermont company. It and they, did, be, they didn't do that, apparently obviously. Not. And yeah. they've used due construction many times. I know. So, so that means that they're fine doing, It's a go-to for them. Yeah. It's like but Rockingham continues to use But they and check all the like boxes. The I here. do believe that they have to answer. Yeah. Yes, but the so answer, think... answer isn't must spend the money in the state of Vermont. It's not. Right. It's probably the lowest bidder. But that comes from the, the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not always the lowest bidder, though. It isn't. It's a really, you could be the lowest bidder and have shitty references you and could. have failed on. No, no, on... lowest bidder who has qualifies and has filled right, all the right. boxes. So yeah. there's all, you know, what are your qualifications? What are your references? Mm -hmm. You know, how many change orders do you think you're going to yeah. put in during the process? You could be a low bidder and bid on a million dollar project, mid, bid 500, yeah. and then have so many change orders that yeah, yeah. during the course that eventually your project in, ends up being two, two million. Oh, yeah. I yeah, get no. that. Or so, do you have experience sure. yeah. with a historical and blah blah yeah. blah? Like yeah. well, the they have to check off the they boxes. Used yeah. a, they used to give us in the municipality of Rockingham Bells Falls, I think it was a five percent differential if we used mm -hmm. lo so okay, so you could right. add five percent on to use an in state and local yes. um mm. Um, vendor, but that's but, not enough. But I think I think that should have come from the the village trustees or the select board yeah. when this was going out to bid. Mm -hmm. I think they should have said it's state mandated. We There's should have about, we, we yeah, should it's... been a, have been involved in yeah. that that project. I know, but I don't know that, that we get any say when they get approved. They don't. We don't well, get if, any say. If they came to to the town and said yeah. we want to do this project, yeah. the select board or the village should have said we want to be yeah. on that that yeah. team. Well, let me say as an owner of a flagging company who has to compete with New Hampshire workers, the state of Vermont has a lot more costs than the yep. state of New Hampshire does. Yep. And because of that, a lot of times this, the next nearby state, the next over state, New Hampshire, gets a lot of the work no matter what the construction field is, whether it's road construction mm -hmm. or building construction because there's there are they have fewer they can lower their costs right remember the state of vermont state of new hampshire their minimum wage is only seven dollars 25 cents an hour they pay more than that but the minimum wage in vermont is 12.55 right now and so new hampshire doesn't have to pay as much as we do but when you do federal we're getting off traffic yeah, yeah, but when federal, you do federal yeah. jobs or grants like this it's yeah. davis bacon and davis Even bacon for, wage is a lot for building different. construction i know davis bacon yeah but for building construction too yeah, all, all of it. Uh -huh. So, but if they're, and if they're working in Vermont, they have to follow the Davis-Bacon rates of Vermont, right. not of New Hampshire. But that's what so, they're paying their employees, but not yeah. necessarily what they're charging per hour. So right. it's different. They're right. different. Charge. Yeah. I want to make sure to give Betsy her yeah. time. So I think, are we good? So, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, we interrupt I'm, each other I'm, all I'm the time. Happy, so I'm happy. So yeah, they'll what interrupt Betsy's me too. On. Don't you worry about <laughs> what I what I want to talk about are what other towns are doing. So here's I mean here's an opportunity for Rockingham. Yes, we have the Rockingham Revolving Loan Fund and I don't remember the other AUD. No, oh. the other housing help. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's just a it's, sub, all through. it's a subcommittee yeah. of the Rockingham Revolving Loan Fund. Okay. Which kind of goes along with what some of these other towns are doing. This is something that Rockingham mm -hmm. could use the money for. Um, so this was um, printed in the seven days, oh, mid July or beginning oh, of oh, July. Seven days, yeah. The um, newspaper. So if anyone's seen the article, obviously you you hear you've read it. But Heinsberg, for example, they're offering grants to property owners to build ADUs, which is the accessory dwelling unit. Oh. Um, so. For example, Bellows Falls has over 90 carriage barns slash garages. And you think, I mean, even if half of those property owners could build 
an accessory dwelling unit, there are 90 plus new homes in this mm -hmm. village. Um, one of the owners, they did price out. They did a pro forma and it, and it didn't work. It didn't price out. Um, so he would have put a lot more money in than he could and he wouldn't have gotten his money back. So he just thought, well, so then Rebecca asked, well, did he apply for a revolving loan? And I don't know the answer to that, but maybe he couldn't take out a loan. Mm -hmm. um, so then there's, you know, is there something that we can then offer a grant assistance? So yes, Heinsberg is doing it. I'm not sure, um, you know, are they getting any help from yeah. the state for that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Montpelier, for example. So four accessory dwelling units were completed over COVID. Three more are in, under construction because they saw the value and because the state now is allowing ADUs. I have this. Can we stop this for a second? This member has to run to the restroom. Mm. Is it possible? Oh, <laughs> one's blue. That one's That's red. That's red. They're still taping. I can leave anyway. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. But I will do that. You continue talking. I will okay. watch you in the rerun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't comment on Woodstock. That's where I'm going next. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Woodstock. <laughs> So Woodstock hired a consultant to help property owners with the process so that they weren't doing this blind mm -hmm. and offered incentives for property owners who were converting short-term rentals uh, into long-term. Wow. So what we do not have in Rockingham, our stipulations are kind of regulations as to how... Um, Airbnbs and short-term rentals. We don't have anything. We're working on it. Right. But right now it's kind of, um, so, and then I'll mention, I just got an email last week from someone. So here's someone, A, that's done their homework and B, really likes Bellis Falls, wants to serve Bellis Falls as a property owner is looking Yes, she knows that um, short-term rental probably would be the thing, but she wants to make sure when she buys that she is servicing Bells Falls and filling our needs. Hmm. And I said that was very forward thinking of her. I really appreciated it. I, I kind of told her both, I mean, I would prefer her to have a long-term rental because I know our housing is shortage but i said you have to also do what's right for you and and i confirmed with chuck wise the zoning administrator and he said we do not have any restrictions on short-term rentals so here it is woodstock is offering an incentive to do that to convert those into long-term they're doing that they're 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 doing an incentive because they want to get away from short-term rentals I don't think they want to remove all their short terms, well, but they're, they're realizing an incentive. we need some apartments yeah, for that. Okay. And because if you go to Woodstock right now, and I think it's many of these towns, I mean, coffee shops, restaurants, everyone's short staffed. And they're realizing that is who we need to start catering to and, is our employees. And so everyone knows a short term rental is Airbnb or Verbo. So short term rental is for people that instead one of night, two night, renting night. out their apartment to somebody, you know, for a long term, like a long term year leash, they've decided to just go the Airbnb route. That's what short term rental is. Okay. Thank so you. Woodstock is has an incentive to get away from that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now there's a Colorado company, they're paying owners to add deed restrictions. So they're going a step further. So that the deed restriction reserves the dwellings as primary residences for locals working at least 30 hours per week. So that means if this person sells in the deed, it's restricted that it has to be rented to and locals. And what does this company from Colorado get? So would the, it, it's just That's in Colorado, they're not, re, they're not a national company. They're just not yet. So it sounds like to me, everyone is suffering from no employees mm -hmm. no local people to live in apartments that are affordable and work the coffee shop the pizza place you know the chinese food restaurant it is hitting everywhere okay yes all right and so on that in the seven days article the woodstock folks are very aware of that mm -hmm. and they're like okay this Colorado company, I don't know if they've been in contact and said, hey, have you? would you branch to Vermont? Would you yeah. consider helping someone develop a company here to do the exact same thing? Yeah. We got five minutes. Oh. 
Wow, that was fast. Okay. So my kind of last take will be Bellis Falls needs to change their zoning for this purpose. Um, I do believe we allow ADUs, but I also want to add we should accommodate tiny homes. We should have stipulations on trailers in the village versus efficient modulars. I don't know if anyone's seen Vermod. I am a huge fan. They're based mm -hmm. out of, um, I can't yeah. think of it, Wilder, okay. Vermont. Yeah. And it's a tiny home, like an artistic oh, version yeah. of a tiny home. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like a trailer, but it's not because it's not a trailer. Yeah. And you snap together and you can have one teeny little, sp It's they're pods, mm -hmm. or you could stack them. Mm -hmm. And there's a place like outside of White River that did a little duplex of Vermont tiny home mm -hmm. efficiencies. And they they park underneath. They're going to have like a... How much are they on average? Um, the, you know, what, 50 grand, 65, you could buy, we the got cheapest would be lots in town. around that. Yes. Okay. And I think what these, um, these were four bedroom, yeah. double stacks with a like parking. Mm -hmm. We're going to be, you know, over two, I think yeah. 250, but oh. yeah, but you'd own your own home. Mm -hmm. You would share the carport. Everything was included and it's efficient. Yeah. You're not paying the oil prices and the, or the mm -hmm. propane, you know, mm -hmm. the, like what a lot of places are going mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of the things that I think we really need to encourage. Yeah. So if you can afford a lot, so then you get some Vermods and you do more than one and then you rent the other one out. Right. So for the ADUs, the town of Rockingham is offering $50,000. So ADU stands for accessory dwelling unit. unit. And that means you can renovate your carriage barn. You can renovate your garage. Um, so the town of Rockingham is offering $50,000 um, to help with that. So if anybody has need for that, like you said, there's like 19 carriage barns. 90. Nine, 90 yeah, yeah. carriage Almost barns. Almost 90. But the problem with that is Rockingham has the money, the 50 grand to help with renovating those carriage barns. About three minutes. But then it has to pass the planning and zoning. You know, which so is you part of the, the zoning money, needs to change. Yes, you can get the money, but then you have to right. go to the zoning board and say, "Hey, can I yeah. convert my carriage barn and into a an NLA?" On that barn? note, I believe they are changing. They're trying yep. to change. What I heard was we have to change the town plan, yep. and we have to accommodate for the zoning changes. Mm -hmm. Then we can change zoning. We can't change the zoning until we've ri written this town plan, yeah. and it is so close to being done. Okay, and everyone has been working on this for years. So, okay. yeah. So there's a lot of positive things in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. Yep. You covered, all your, covered all your housing? I she did. did. She did. That's okay. Yeah. I apologize for having you. It, it, no, no, that's okay. It feels like there's a lot of information out there. And I wish, I, I think yeah. people need to email us and say, hey, can you just email me back all the little links that I need? Yeah, yeah. so we'll send you and all this information we, start, we discussed. You mentioned a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to start a Facebook page. Hey, this is what we talked about. Here are the links. I'm more than happy to help anyone that wants to buy a house and know yeah. how to be a landlord. You have expertise and grants and everything else and your, your background, Deb. So. Yeah. No. And, and then again, I'll just say, because we're associated with all yeah. of these, the town, the village, pieces, yeah, BIFTA, but that's not who's here around the table, but we have those resources too. So we can, we know a lot we of can these, help. I know a lot of these pieces and the people involved in these pieces. We realize that it's currently, it's an ineffective process getting it out to the public. Um, we are trying to be that conduit um, so that we can help people find the things that they need. So. There, so we started up a, a Facebook page, which apparently is going to get more Ooh. commercial these days, I'm afraid. But if we yeah. start up a yeah, Facebook page to allow people, more people to access us. Yeah. So remember, nonpchousing at gmail.com is another way to anonymously reach us um, with information and comments um, and in situations, things that are going on um, in your life that we may not know about. We hear, because the three of us are in different areas of concerning housing, we hear a lot of different stories. And we can share those stories without you being public at all. Without yeah. making a name. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
and, uh, and so that's, use this yeah. platform we're going to use we're going to do this again next month in august um this will probably come out i'm assuming it'll be come out the beginning of august but at the end of august we'll do another filming um on the same topic with more information now that we've yep. sort of peeling the onion we've taken um pieces of this and we have opened it up we want your comments we want your feedback um we want to work to move forward on these issues because they do need change and we are trying to find ways. I mean, I like to just take the millions of dollars and just throw it out. To the hmm. public, you know, make sure everybody has access to it. What, but in, I guess in a rational sense, the way to do that is to loosen, to look at all of the um, requirements or hurdles that people need to get through in order to get the funding that they need. We need to find ways to get those organizations to open up to change. I mean, they've been that way for a long time. A lot of the money just sits. It doesn't get utilized. So what's the purpose of that? I just think that when the ta- when an organization like Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust oh. comes to the town and says, hey, we want to build in your community, that is a prime opportunity to say, you can build here, but you have to support 10 families in getting them their own house. Yes. Do you know, you, 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 yeah, you need to, as the, the trustee and or the select board, you need to say, yeah, you can build here, but, but here, you need to get, you need to a tit for tat. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I think they how, would do that. How we can do that. How do you put those restrictions on them? You, you saw the Wyndham Windsor housing process, um, trust process, which people have been aggravated by from start to yeah. Went, not there's some finished conflict. Yet. There's some conflict about the changes, what they said they were going to do, but what they're actually doing. Yep. Um, apparently, you've been very cooperative with the building of butters, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, but the finished product's going to have some say on that. Mm-hmm. And what the restrictions will be for local people who live here already, who need mm-hmm. housing, will they get preference over people who um, are out of community? Yeah, that's a big concern of who they're moving into that building. Mm-hmm. Are they taking the dreads from another town? Oh, right, we would love you yeah. to house our local people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the things I wanted to bring up was seeing if we could read that letter that got sent to the governor. Yeah, I think we have to. I think um, so Next. for everyone, uh, there is a letter going to the governor about violence in our communities around um, drugs. Uh, out-of-staters, guns, um, abuse, and it's uh, predominantly coming out of Springfield, but there are a large group of people that have gotten together and wrote the governor a letter to have a conversation uh, about changing the the drug and uh, gun violence that's going on right now in our, some of our communities. So the governor needs to get that letter. Yeah. I think that's going to him this week okay. and then he needs to respond. And if he doesn't respond, then it, the letter goes public. Yeah. So, so by the I think I think I think this. I think we need to be the first place that talks about that letter. Yeah. Not let it get to the paper. Well, we're already Have talking it, about read it now. It here. <laughs> You're going to read that Next letter month. here. It's going to be on our put Facebook it right page. Up on there. And you're going to see what's in that letter. But we need to let the governor have the ability to respond because we're asking the governor as locals and landlords for a meeting with him specifically. And all of this, of course, is so there's about a challenge and how it surrounds We uh, We have sent out yeah. a challenge to the governor. Yeah. yeah, We didn't even talk about the difficulties that landlords are having with getting saddled by some of these nonprofit organizations mm-hmm. with um, unbalanced, um, whether drug drug addled or otherwise into their housing and once they get them placed the nonprofits walk away they are not able to provide adequate support for landlords to deal right. with what they wind up with mm-hmm. um, and then getting them and then moving them on if that becomes an issue because of additional problems and violence um, the lack of support that comes from that not just them but laws so police and fire and going back up to our legislature, state government, and feds. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's a back that's a backup. It's like a clogged drain. You can't seem to get it unclogged. Yeah, yeah. So our, we started after that hour. So did they uh, giving us I'm a little longer? I'm not sure. It's we, still oh, running. Did he give I you will, five? Did he, he said five, five minutes, minutes? But okay. it's still okay, running. So, we're so I'll just mention our legislature. They are asking. Um, so ha- have you learned what has passed through the pipeline? And I think they're eager to hear what else do we want. 
So again, we wrap it back to it's middle housing. It's uh, middle it, income it, housing. It, it's an election year. We're so done. Okay. We need to finish. Okay. We're done. So good night. Thank yes. you very much for Thank turning you. on. Thanks for joining, joining us. Yeah. See you next month. Thanks, ladies. See you in August. Thank you.